Good afternoon, brothers and sisters to the House of Jacob, Chicago, Sabbath Bible class. I'll be your reader for today. I'm Brother Steve. The title, how you doing, brother? The title of the lesson for the day is Beware of False Doctrine to Deliver. Our spiritual food today will be our pastor and brother, Brother Daniel. I want to thank Brother Steve for the introduction and say uh, good afternoon to everybody. Welcome everybody here to the house of Jacob. Yes, sir. Brother Steve gave you the title of the lesson again. It is Beware of False Doctrine. Now, false doctrine, that is teaching that is really contrary to the word of God. And false doctrine, people, is dangerous. It really is. People don't understand that. But it is dangerous. The brother said it. It will get you cut off. Make no mistake about it. So I always like to tell people to make certain that they get this right. Because it is important that you get it right. You know, God said what it is that we are supposed to do as servants. And he gave us his true doctrine written in his word. Gave us the instructions that we are supposed to follow. First thing you need to do is read the instructions and understand the instructions. And then do your best to follow. Amen. Now, uh, Jesus said, especially in these last days, that there would be much false doctrine being taught. We're going to start it out in Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read just a couple of verses. This is about Matthew 24th chapter. It is about the second coming of Jesus and the signs leading up to his coming. We're not really concerned with these signs today because we are not really dealing with his second coming. But we are in the generation that will be around at his second coming. So what he said, he applies to this generation. And I just want to read you one of the things he said would be happening prior to his coming. We want to begin reading at Matthew chapter 24. And we'll pick it up at verse 3, Matthew 24. And we'll begin reading at verse 3. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, <coughs> Tell us, when shall these things be? And what should be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now they're asking him about the signs of his coming and of the end of the world. We're living in this generation because the things that he said here, uh, they are being fulfilled right before our eyes. So we know that we are in this generation. So we know that what we are reading here actually applies to this generation. Go ahead and read a little more. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. Now the very first thing he said, take heed was that no man deceive you. Dece deception, that means to be misled. You know, um, in other words, somebody has told you something that is false and they have led you to believe that it is true. That's what deception is. So the Lord said in this generation, just before he makes his coming, before he gave even one sign, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Because the Lord understood that there would be much deception going on just prior to his coming. That is what false doctrine is. It is deception, people. Go ahead and read a little more. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now he says that many would come, and they would acknowledge that he is Christ. But yet they still would deceive many. So just because they come to you preaching Christ, that does not mean that they're giving you the truth. He said many, he didn't say a few. He said many would come in his name saying he is Christ and yet they still would deceive many. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to give you his name, but they're not going to give you his doctrine. Skip down to verse 11. Go ahead and read, brother. 
and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now he said, and many false prophets would arise and they would deceive many. So that means we are living in this generation now. So That's that right. means that there is a lot of deception that is going on today. So you have to beware. And the way they deceive you is by giving you false doctrine. They don't give you the doctrine of Christ. They give you another doctrine. Let's go to uh, 2 John chapter 2. 2 John, that's over near Revelation, just before you get to Revelation. 2 John chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. 2 John chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 7. 2 and 7. 2 and 7. So you really need to be aware, people, of what you're being taught because, as I said earlier, false doctrine is dangerous, people. It will mislead you, and it will cause you to get cut off, as somebody said. People, you know, people don't think a lot of it, you know, that, well, you know, you worship God your way, I worship him mine. You know, that's just how you choose to worship God, and I choose to worship him a different way. No, there's a, but one way you can worship God, and that's by following his teaching. That's the only way you can worship him. Now, if you're doing it any other way, then you are dealing with a false doctrine, and you are being misled, and you can wind up being misled to the point that it would cause you to be cut off. Let's start reading here at 2 John chapter 2. And we'll begin, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, 2 John, yeah, 2 John. Uh, There's only one chapter, I'm sorry, but 2 John. 2 John, it's only one chapter. We'll start reading at verse, uh, at verse 7. 2 John, uh, verse 7. Go ahead and read. For many deceivers are entered into the world uh -huh. who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, Jesus told you that many would come in his name and they would uh, profess that he is the Christ, but yet they would deceive many. Now, here John is talking about many deceivers uh, uh, would, would come and they profess not that uh, Jesus is come in the flesh. Go ahead and read on. Look to yourselves uh -huh. that we, sh we lose not those things which we have wrought, Go ahead. but we receive a full reward. Uh -huh. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. And the reason you don't have God is it's because Jesus told you his doctrine is not his own, but his doctrine is, is the Father's doctrine. So if you don't have the doctrine of Jesus, then you don't have the doctrine of the Father either. You understand what I'm saying? Because what Jesus came with, he came with the doctrine of the Father. So now if you don't have Jesus' doctrine, then you don't have the doctrine of the Father. Go ahead and read on. He that abided in the doctrine of Christ, uh -huh. he hath both the Father and the Son. Go ahead and read. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, uh -huh. receive him not into your house, neither bid, bid him God speed. Now he said, if there come any unto you and don't come with this doctrine, don't receive him in your house and don't even bid him God speed. God speed mean God be with you. Now, how are you going to say to a man that come with a doctrine other than the doctrine of Jesus, God be with you? If you do that, then you are condoning what he is saying. And he is telling you something that is contrary to the doctrine of Christ, which means it is contrary to the doctrine of the Father. Go ahead and read some more. For he that bidden him God's speed is uh, partaker of his evil deeds. Now, if you, if you say God be with you, then you are partaker of his evil deeds because you are condoning what he is saying. Let's go now to uh, Revelation chapter uh, 12, and we'll pick it up at verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, and we'll begin reading at verse 7, and I'm going to show you the author of false doctrine. Revelation chapter 12. And we began reading at verse 7, 12 and 7, 12 and 7. Because false teaching been around since God put man on this earth, people. Only thing is Jesus just let you know in the latter days it's going to even be worse. Because, he, you know, you ain't going to have a false prophet here and a false prophet there. He said you're going to have many false prophets and they are going to deceive many. But false doctrine been around since the start of man. Since the Lord set the first man and woman on this earth, you have had false doctrine. Start reading at uh, Revelations chapter 12 and began reading at uh, verse 7, 12 and 7. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Go ahead. And the dragon fought in his angels uh -huh. and prevailed not. 
neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Now this dragon, this is none other than the devil, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels because the dragon, he decided, you know, he had a position with God, but he decided he didn't want that. So he decided that he was going to exalt himself above the thrones of God, and he's going to be like the most high. And he wound up getting cast out of heaven. Go ahead and read on. And the great dragon was cast out, uh -huh. that old serpent called the devil, Go ahead. and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, uh -huh. and his angels were cast out with him. Now notice what it said about him here. He deceived the entire world. That included everybody, didn't it? That's right. But fortunately, uh, uh, some were able to come from under that deception because they found the true word of God and they turned to it. But it said that he deceived the entire world. And he started with the very first man and woman. Let's go back and pick it up. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. And we began reading at verse 7, 2 and 7. Because false doctrine can cause you to be killed even. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse uh, uh, 7, 2 and 7, 2 and 7. Bad doctrine, that's what caused Adam and Eve to die. Because it was never supposed to have been. Start reading at 2 and 7. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh -huh. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we know all about the trees that's good for food and pleasant to the eyes and all of that. But he also put a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, this tree of life, this tree of knowledge of good and evil, these are symbolic. These are not literal trees that you can go up and take some food off of and eat and live forever. These trees, both are, they are symbolic. Now, this is what the Lord said to the man, and it went for the woman as well, uh, when he put them in the garden and, and, uh, and, uh, and had the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil there as well. Start reading at verse 15. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Uh -huh. and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now he told him, you know, in the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that is the day that you shall surely die. Let's go now to uh, Genesis chapter 3. And uh, we'll pick it up at verse 1. But now he said to the man, you know, every tree of the God you may freely eat. That includes the tree of life as well. But he said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in the day that you eat of that tree, that is the day that you are going to die. As I said earlier, these trees, they were symbolic. You know, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that represented Satan and his doctrine. And the tree of life, that represented the Lord and his doctrine. Let's start reading uh, at uh, Genesis 3 and 1. Because this didn't have nothing to do with eating of any food. This was all about eating spiritual food. Right. You know, certain food, it'll kill you. And certain food, it will, it will uh, keep you alive. It will give you everlasting life, in other words. Let's start reading at, uh, at uh, Genesis chapter 3. And began reading at verse 1. Now, Lord, and told the man and the woman of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat of that tree because if you do, you are going to die. So now that includes the tree of life. You can eat of that tree. But don't eat of any of the rest of the tree. That's what God said. You are going to die if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But look at what the serpent said. Start reading at... Uh, 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 chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now who is this serpent? This is not a snake crawling around on the ground. It's the devil that you read about over in Revelation chapter 12, which is an angel that the Lord cast out and cast out his angels with him. So now, and the serpent said unto, uh, 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 the serpent rather was more subtle than any beast of the field. In other words, he was more cunning. He was more crafty than any beast of the field. Go ahead and read on. 
And he said unto the woman, uh -huh. Yea, have God said you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, uh -huh. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, uh -huh. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said ye should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So now, you know, they knew better, right? They knew what God had said to them. You know, the woman knew as well as the man knew because the woman is the one that's responding to Satan here. You know, uh, God has said we not may uh, we may not eat of every tree of the God, you know, uh, but because in the day we eat thereof, that is the day that we are going to die. So she knew, didn't she? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, Go ahead. You should not surely die. So this is where false doctrine started right here. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord said you're going to die if you eat of it. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. That's right. So that false doctrine started from the time that the Lord set the first man and the first woman on this earth. And it has been going on ever since. Continue reading. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, uh -huh. then your eyes should be open. And you should be as God's, knowing good and evil. And he gave them some truth there, as he always do. You understand? Because they did become as God's, knowing good and evil. And the Lord would have told them when he was ready to tell them. But he said, don't, he told them, don't eat of the tree. That's the day you're going to die. But they choose to eat of it anyway. So now, and the woman knew better. And, and, and the serpent said, until you shall not surely die. This is where the false doctrine, the false teaching started at. Go ahead and read on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So it lets you know you wasn't dealing with a literal tree here because there is no tree that you can go and pull some food <laughs> off of and eat thereof that will make you wise. You understand no, what I'm saying? No. If that would be if it was the case, you wouldn't need no books, would you? That's right. You wouldn't need no teachers. You wouldn't need no books. All you need is some food. There you go. <laughs> so that lets you know they were not dealing with a literal tree here. You know, you was going to either deal with the, with the knowledge of Satan or you were going to deal with the knowledge of God. You deal with the knowledge of God, you can live forever. You deal with the knowledge of Satan, that is the day that you're going to die. It's going to kill you. It starts killing all the way back from the beginning and it's still killing them even unto this day. Yes, sir. Because if you got Satan's doctrine, and if you don't at some point get away from it, eventually it's going to kill you. And I'm not just talking about a physical death either. Right. I'm talking about an eternal death. Yeah. Go ahead and read some more. Middle of six. Go ahead. She took other fruit thereof and did eat. Uh -huh. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So now both of them ate of it, and Lord has said to them, if you eat of it, that is the day that you are going to die. Skip down now to uh, verse 13. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Uh -huh. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Now the woman said, You know, the serpent, he tricked me, he fooled me, and, and I did eat of it. Because, you know, I know what you said, God. You said, Don't eat of it. That's the day we're going to die. But see, the serpent said, I'm not going to surely die. So I, lo I listened to him. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, uh -huh. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, uh -huh. and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Now this has a meaning as well. We're not dealing with that today. Go ahead and read on. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed. Now I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And who is her seed? Anybody that will follow the teaching of Satan. That's who uh, uh, Satan's seed is. The woman's seed, really, that, well, I didn't want to get into that, but really this woman's seed is talking about Jesus, but I don't want to go into all that because that is somewhat of another lesson. But go ahead and read on. It shall bruise thy head, uh -huh. and thou shalt bruise his heel. Go ahead and read. Unto the woman, he said, mm -hmm. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Go ahead. In sorrow thou shalt bring <laughs> forth children. And thy desire should be to thy husband, uh -huh. and he shall rule over thee. Go ahead and read. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, mm -hmm. and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Uh -huh. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Go ahead. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, mm -hmm. till thou return it to the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto thou, dust thou shalt return. In other words, you're going to die. You came out of the ground, and you're going back to the ground. But now, who was it that first gave them this bad doctrine? Satan is the one that gave it to them, didn't it? And he, by the, by the words 
that he gave them. That is what caused them to die. That's you know, right. he ain't killed nobody. He ain't literally came and killed nobody. That's right. But he gave them the words that would cause them to die. Let's go to uh, John chapter 8 now, and we're going to pick it up at verse 37. John 8 and 37. So he gave them bad teaching. Right. And that is what caused them. That's what false doctrine is. It is bad teaching. Right. And you can see that it caused these people to die. Just simply by listening to false doctrine and choosing to follow it. Because they had a choice. Right. As man has always had a choice. Right. When the Lord brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt, he gave them a choice. Right. You know, he said, I set before you Good and life and death and evil choose life that you might live. They had a cho but he gave him a choice, didn't yes, he? Man of oh, the very first man had a choice. Because he had a choice between the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Lord even said to Cain, if you do it well, shall not you be accepted? That's right. But if you do it not well, then sin lies at the door. And if sin lies at the door, that means that death lies at the door. Right. Let's go now to uh, John chapter 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 37. John 8, and we'll begin reading at verse 37. People don't really understand the dangers of false doctrine. They really don't. You know, they go to this thing, well, you know, I like to worship this way, you can worship that way, you know, <laughs> as if as if it's okay with God right. for them to worship <laughs> any way that they choose to worship. I can say this much to them, they're going to be in for one rude awakening. Because okay. Jesus said something that we're going to read a little bit later about them people who are going to stand before him and talk about what all they did in his name. And he gonna say, "Depart from me, ye work of iniquity. I never knew you." He said, "Not all that says unto me, Lord, Lord, gonna enter into the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of my Father, that is the one that's gonna get in." The Father got a will, and he told you what it is in His Word. That's why you gotta read this Word. You understand what I'm saying? You gotta make certain that what you are being, uh, what what you are following, is really the Word of God. You gotta make certain of that. Because if you don't make certain of that, then you have no eternal life coming. The only thing you have coming is eternal damnation. That's all you got coming. Why do you think God went through the trouble of giving you all these instructions in the first place? And they got a book full of instructions. And you're going to say, well, I don't need that. You know, I'm going to do this my way. Your way going to always lead you to somewhere you don't want to be. Right. The book said, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ways thereof leadeth to destruction. Always. Your way going to always lead to destruction. Start reading at uh, 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 John chapter 8 and began reading at verse uh, 37. We're going to pick it up at verse 37. We're going to save a little time. Verse 37. You know, Jesus had uh, said earlier in this chapter, uh, you know, if you do not believe I am he, then you're going to die in your sins because it's only through him that you can get salvation, only through him. You know, he came to die for your sins, and if you do not accept that, then you are going to die for your own sin because somebody's going to die for your sin. The wages of sin is death, people, and somebody's going to die for him. Either he died for him or you're going to die for him. You have a choice in that matter, too. That's right. Go ahead and read. Start reading at verse 37. Go ahead and read, bro. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, uh -huh. but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. Now, he's, you know, they talking about we be Abraham's seed. We ain't never been in bondage to no man. But he said, you, I, I know you're Abraham's seed, but he said, but you seek to kill me. And the reason you want to kill me is because my word have no place in you. And that is the same thing today. The word of God don't have no place in most people today. That's most right. people do not want to hear the word of God. That's right. You want to start a big argument, you walk in a church with the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you they're going to show you the door. <laughs> Go ahead and read. I speak that which I have seen with my father, uh -huh. and you do that which you have seen with your father. Go ahead and read. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, 
If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Well, he just told them they was a Abraham was their father. Didn't he say that? Yes, sir. But now he's saying to them, if you were re if Abraham was really your father, then you would do the works of Abraham. So you know Abraham was their father in the flesh, but he wasn't their father in the spirit, cause they was following another father in the spirit. Go ahead, read on. But now you seek to kill me, uh -huh. a man that have told you the truth, Go ahead. which I have heard of God. Uh -huh. This did not Abraham. Go ahead, read. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came, came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Go ahead, read. Why did you not understand my speech? Mm -hmm. Even because you cannot hear my word. Now he said, why you don't understand my speech? It's because you don't hear my They understood the word. They, you know, they, they understood the word that was coming out of his mouth, but they didn't really understand. You understand? Because they all spoke the same language. Wasn't like he was speaking some foreign language to them. That's right. So they understood the words that was coming out of his mouth, but they really, really didn't understand. Because sometimes I know you have talked to people, and, and, and you're speaking a, a simple language that you know they understand, but yet they don't really understand. That's right. And that is what he said. Why do you un un understand uh, uh, my, my, my speech here? Go ahead and read on. Yeah, of your father the devil. And the reason you don't understand it because you are of your father the devil. Go ahead and read on. And the lust of your father ye would do. Uh huh. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now he was a murderer from the very beginning. He didn't kill nobody in the very beginning, but he did kill somebody, didn't he? Yes, but how did he kill them? He gave them the words that caused them to die. That's right. And they listened and they chose to follow those words. Go ahead and read on. And abode not in the truth uh -huh. because there is no truth in him. Go ahead and read. When he speaketh of lie, he speaketh of his own. Uh -huh. For he is a liar and the father of it. Yes, he is. He's a liar and he's the father of it because he told the first lie. Let's go now to our Second Corinthians chapter 11 and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and we'll begin reading at verse 1. So, you know, he started it out. He was the one that gave the first false doctrine. And we see the people that listened to him, it caused them to die. But now, he don't come directly to men anymore. Mm -hmm. But he's still perpetrating that false doctrine. Show you how he does it now. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And we'll pick it up at uh, verse 1, 2 Corinthians 11, and we'll begin reading at verse 1, 11 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, uh -huh. and indeed bear with me. Go ahead. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, uh -huh. for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Go ahead. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Now Paul is saying to these Corinthians, he said, I fear these by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Go ahead and read on. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Oh, so, so your mind will be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So now he, he's warning these Corinthians here. You know, you saw what uh, he did unto Eve. Now, he said, I fear at least your mind be corrupted as well from the simplicity that is in Christ. Go ahead and read on. For if he that come and preaches another Jesus, uh, whom we have not preached. Now, Paul is just one of these, if one come preaching another Jesus. In other words, if he come with another doctrine. Go ahead and read on. Or if you received another spirit, uh -huh. which, which ye have not received. Go ahead. Or another gospel. Or even another gospel. Go ahead and read on. Which you have not accepted. Uh-huh. Ye might well bear with him. Skip down to verse 13. Go ahead and read, brother. For such a false apostle. Now he said these people that's going to come with this another Jesus, with this another doctrine, with this another gospel, he said they are false apostles. Go ahead and read on. Deceitful workers. And they are deceitful workers. In other words, they are people that will mislead you. That's right. They are not giving you the word of God. That is how they mislead you. So he said they, that they are false apostles and they are deceitful workers. Go ahead and read on. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. But they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. They don't come to you as false apostles now. 
You know, they come to you as apostles of Christ. You know, they come, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They would Jesus you to death. As Jesus said, they would come in his name. But yet they will deceive you. How is That's that? Right. They're going to give you his name, but they're not going to give you his doctrine. Right. Now, he said these people, they are false apostles. They are deceitful workers, but they transform themselves into apostles of Christ. Go ahead and read on. And no marvel, uh -huh. for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now, and, and he did try and transform himself into an angel of light because he said to them, for God doeth no. In the day that you eat thereof, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, I got some good news for That's you. That's right. <laughs> Transforming himself into an angel of light, again, by his teaching. Right. You know, he told him a lie that was going to get him killed, but then he dressed it up a little yes, bit. Sir. For God, no. In the day that you eat thereof, you will be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, I'm an angel of light. Look what I just told you. <laughs> but you just told me something about that that's going to get me killed. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead and read. What verse are we? 15. Go ahead and read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the minister of righteousness. Wait a minute. He said, therefore, now it is no great thing if his ministers be transformed as ministers of of righteousness. That is how they approach you as ministers of righteousness. They come to you in the name of Jesus, but they do not give you his doctrine. They transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Go ahead and read on. Whose end should be according to their works. But their end going to be according unto their works. In other words, the Lord done appointed a time that he's going to deal with them. Let's go now to uh, let's go now to uh, 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 First uh, Timothy chapter 4, and uh, uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, this is a letter Paul wrote uh, uh, to Timothy here. First Timothy chapter 4, and we are going to begin reading at verse 1. So, you know, so Satan, he is the author of this false doctrine. It started all the way back in the garden with Adam and Eve. Now he's got ministers that still perpetrating that false doctrine. That's right. It have not changed. Let's go now to... Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 1, 4 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read, bro. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Wait a minute, he said, now the Spirit is speaking expressly, that in the latter times, so we did a latter time. You know what Jesus said about latter times, didn't it? Many false prophets would arise, and they would deceive many, and they would come in his name, saying he is Christ, and yet they would deceive many. Now, here Paul is saying, now, the Spirit speaketh that expressly that in the latter times some will depart from the faith. Go ahead and read on. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And they will be giving heed to spirits that lead to error and to doctrines of devils. They will be listening to doctrines of devils. Go ahead and read on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hard iron. Go ahead. Forbidding to marry uh -huh. and commanded to abstain from meat. Now, he said they would be forbidden to marry and they would be commanded to abstain from meat. God never forbid it to marry. Not, not, the doctrine of God did not forbid to marry. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But now these people are going to come along with these doctrines of devils that will forbid to marry and command to abstain from meat. And God have never commanded to abstain from meat. God commanded to abstain from certain meat. That's right. But he said in a lot of time, these people would come listening to these seducing spirits and these doctrines of devils, and they would be forbidden to marry, and they would be commanding to abstain from me. Go ahead and finish that verse. Which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, we're not going to deal with that today, but there's a verse in here they use to try and circumvent God's dietary law, but we know that is not the case. When we deal with the dietary law, we'll come back and deal with that. But I just wanted to show you that in the latter times, that uh, that uh, 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 doctrines of devils will prevail. That's right. That is my purpose for showing you this. Now, let's go. Uh, let's go uh, 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 to Revelation chapter two, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twelve. Now, when Jesus sent messages to the churches, you know He warned them about following bad doctrine. Revelation chapter two, and we're gonna pick it up 
at uh, verse 12, Revelation 2 and verse 12. You know, over and over again, the Lord warned concerning bad doctrine or bad teaching. Lord, over and over again, he did that. Revelation chapter 2, and we began reading at uh, verse 12. Okay, go ahead and read. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write. Uh-huh, now he said to the angel of the church of Pergamos write. Go ahead and read on. These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Uh-huh. I know thy works. Go ahead. And where thou dwellest. Uh-huh. Even where Satan's seed is. Now he said, I know your works, even where you dwelleth. And he said, you even dwelleth where Satan's seed is. Go ahead and read on. And thou holdest fast my name. Uh-huh. And has not denied my faith. Now he's saying to some of them here, he said, you hold fast my name, and you have not denied my faith. Go ahead and read on. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, uh-huh. who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Now he said, I had a faithful martyr uh, that was Antipas that was slain among you in the place where Satan dwelleth. Go ahead and read on. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now he said, but yet I got a few things against you, because you have there those that hold the doctrine of Balaam. You got a you got some of that among you. You know, I got the ones that's been my faithful servant, but he said there's some among you that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Go ahead and read on. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. Now he said he taught Balak. Now, now, now Balaam, he was a soothsayer, a false prophet, one that dealt okay. in false doctrine. Right. Now he said he taught Balak to uh, go against the children of Israel. Go ahead and read on. To eat things sacrificed unto idols. And he taught them to eat things that are sacrificed unto idols. Go ahead and read on. And to commit fornication. And to commit fornication. This fornication here, that means serving other gods because he's dealing with a, a spiritual fornication here. And this is not a physical fornication, but a spiritual fornication. So now you have that doctrine. Of bad, you know, like some among you got this, this bad doctrine. That's right. You know, some among you that, that, that's there where Satan's seed is, you got this bad doctrine. And, you know, it's caused you to uh, commit fornication, what is dealing with spiritual fornication. Go ahead and read it. What verse out? 15. Go ahead and read it. So as there are also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Now he said, not, and he said, even there's some among you, you got the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And he said, I hate that doctrine as well. Go ahead and read on. Which thing I hate. He said, which things I hate. Go ahead and read. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly. Uh -huh. and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now he said, now what you need to do is repent. You know, if you, for those among you that's got this bad doctrine, he said, repent or else I will come up, uh, among you and fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Skip down to uh, verse 18. Go ahead and read. And into the angel of the church in Thyatira. Right. Now, now he's right, uh, telling the angel of the church in Thyatira. Right. Go ahead and read on. These things said the Son of God, uh -huh. who have his eyes like into a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. Go ahead and read. I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Go ahead and read. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which is called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Now, now, now he, he, he's talking about those that have the doctrine of Jezebel. That's what he called Jezebel. She had long been gone. You know, people always That's talk right. about Jezebel, you know, like she was some street woman, uh, you know, standing on the corner or something. No, that's not the Jezebel. Jezebel <laughs> was a false prophet, if you understand what I'm saying. And she misled the people. That's, that's right. what she did. Now, he said, read that verse again. Go ahead and read. Verse 20. Uh-huh. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Now, he said, notwithstanding, you know, you had some that's, that's, that's walking in righteousness, but he said, there's some among you, and I got a few things against them. Go ahead and read on. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, uh -huh. which calleth herself a prophetess, go, go ahead. to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. He said, you cause her to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication. In other words, again, he's dealing with a spiritual fornication here, and he's dealing with the doctrine of Jezebel. Not Jezebel herself, but the doctrine of Jezebel. Go ahead and read on. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Go ahead and read. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, uh -huh. and she repented not. Go ahead and read. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, mm. and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Now he said, I'm going to cast her into a bed, and those that choose to follow that doctrine, 
I'm going to cast them in the great trip. You know, this is what bad doctrine can cause. You know, it can right. cost you the life, and it might get you thrown into the great tribulation somewhere you don't want to be. That's right. Because the Lord called it a time of trouble like there has never been before and shall never be again. And if you understood the thing that will go on during that time, you will understand you don't want to be there. Go ahead and read some more. Except they repent of their deeds. He said, except they repent of their deeds. Go ahead and read on. And I will kill her children with death. Uh huh. And all and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. Uh huh. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Go ahead. But unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, I, as many as have not this doctrine. Now he said, unto you and unto the rest of Thyatira. See what it said, as many as have not this doctrine. So as I said, they had the doctrine of Jezebel. Now for those that have not this doctrine, go ahead and read on. And which have not known the deaths of Satan uh -huh. as they speak. Go ahead. I will put upon you none other burden. Go ahead. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Now, let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 18, and we'll pick it up at verse 9. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. Now, this is another bad doctrine here that is contrary to uh, the word of God. Let's start reading at Deuteronomy 18, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. 18 and 9. 18 and 9. Okay. 18 and 9. All right, go ahead and read, brother. When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, this is the Lord saying to Israel. Now, when you come into the land that the Lord God giveth thee, you know, because there were other people that was there in the land, and what the Lord is saying by the mouth of Moses here, when you get into the land, don't learn the ways of these people. Don't do the thing that they do. Don't you do that. Go ahead and read on. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Now he said, not learn, don't learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Those nations that was in the land, it was things that they were doing that the Lord considered as an abomination. Go ahead and read on. And people are doing these things right today. Go ahead and read on. They may be called by a different name, but they are still doing them right today. Go ahead and read on. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. In other words, to sacrifice your son. He said, uh, now don't, 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 don't uh, let there be found among you any among you that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire or do other th or any of these other things that these nations do. Go ahead and read on. Or that uses divination. Uh-huh. Or an observer of time. Go ahead. Or an enchanter or a witch. Now, you know, all this stuff have to do with the occult. Right. And the Lord is telling them don't do that because the Lord understood when you deal with this kind of stuff, then you are looking to get you a demon. You are really dealing with the doctrine of Satan then because you are looking to get you a demon because the Lord even had it for those people that dealt in that kind of stuff or even those people that consulted in people that dealt in that kind of stuff. The Lord said the one that dealt in it, they would have been put to death, and the one that consulted the one that dealt in it, they too would have been put to death. That's right. And you still got them around today. You know, they call them readers and psychics and all of that. That's right. You are dealing with the occult, and the Lord said, don't do that. Because you're really dealing with satanic stuff when you do that. Go ahead and read on. Verse 11. Uh-huh. Or a charmer. Go ahead. Or a consultant with familiar spirits. Uh-huh. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. Now, so, you know, you know, the Lord named, like he named this necromancer. That is one that supposedly deal with the spirits of the dead. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? All this stuff is demonic. And the Lord is saying to Israel, don't do this. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, 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 well, skip down to verse 15 first. Go ahead and read. We're going to get back to this. I'm going to show you something else. But, but skip down first to verse 15. Go ahead and read. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Now, you know, Israel, they, 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 they said, well, uh, 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 Moses, don't, don't let the Lord speak to us anymore, lest we die. Moses said, well, all right, then, this is what I'll do. 
I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. The Lord God going to raise up a prophet among you. He said that prophet will be like unto me. Go ahead and read on. Of thy brethren uh -huh. like unto me. He said that the Lord your God, since you don't want to hear the voice of the Lord anymore, now the Lord your God going to raise up to you a prophet of your brethren like unto me. Go ahead and read on. Unto him ye shall hearken. And he said, and unto him you shall listen. If you don't know who this prophet is, you better figure it out. Because the Lord said, if, if you don't listen to this prophet, he will require it of you. Okay. I don't know who that prophet is. Well, you better find out. Because you better listen to him, too. Go ahead and read on. According to all that thou desires of the Lord thy God in Horab Go in ahead. the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto me, uh -huh. they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Uh -huh. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, Go ahead. like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. Now he said, I'm going to raise up a prophet from among my brother, uh, like among your brethren, like unto thee, and I am going to put my words in his mouth. You know what Jesus said when he came? He said, my doctrine is not mine. It is the Father That's that right. gave it to me. Yeah. Now, he said, now, and, and the book we read earlier, if you don't have a doctrine of Christ, then you don't have a doctrine of the Father. That's right. Because the doctrine that Jesus came with, it was not his own. It was the Father's that sent him. Go ahead and read on. And he should speak unto them all that I all that I shall command him. And Jesus said, I only speak what my father command me. I didn't come with nothing. And guess what? All of those that came after him that was really his servants, they didn't come with their own doctrine either. That's like right. people like to say about Paul, you know, uh, 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 the prophets, they had their own thing. And then Jesus and the 12, they had their own thing. And then Paul came with another thing. <laughs> Paul said, I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's right. Come with nothing. Jesus didn't come with nothing. And, the, and, the, and, 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 and Paul and none of the other apostles didn't come with nothing except what Jesus gave to them that the Father gave to him. That's right. That's right. Go ahead and read on. Verse 19. Go ahead. And it should come to pass that whosoever would not hearken unto the words which he should speak in my name. Now he said, would come to pass whosoever do not listen to the words which he shall speak in my name. Go ahead and read on. I will require it of him. That's why I say you better get it right. You better figure out who it is. Well, it ain't Jesus. Okay, well, you better come up with the right ones. Because <laughs> the Lord said, if you don't listen to these words, I am going to require it of you. That right. is, Jesus, make no mistake about it. It don't matter whether you believe it or not. One day you're going to know. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Get back to these uh, familiar spirits and all of that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 8. And we're going to pick it up in, uh, in, in, in uh, verse 13. Because, you know, he told you all about these people uh, with familiar spirits and Nicaromas or however you pronounce that word. You know, these are people that supposedly deal with the dead. Yes, right. And you do not deal with the dead. When they dead, you do not consult with them. Don't be like Saul. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> He gonna go and 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 and, and uh, uh, have a uh, a woman that deal with a familiar spirit to call up Samuel. Gonna call up a dead person to consult with them about what's going on among the living, cause he was scared that the the uh, uh, Philistines was was finna take his head off. So now he said, and then he, you know, he trying to, he, he, he trying to consult with the Lord then, but, but the Lord was through with it. So Lord ain't asking him by, by no means is the Lord asking him. Well, let me go call up the dead so the dead can tell me what's going on <laughs> among the living. But the Lord done told you don't do none of this stuff. And he done told you the people that deal in this stuff put them to death because they going to cause you to get you a demon. And they still dealing with it, and they still dealing with demons. They still dealing with it. Right. You know, they got the different names for them now, but they, it's the same old stuff. Oh, yeah. He's, he's not a uh, 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 one that deals with f familiar spirits. Now, he's a reader. Mm, okay. <laughs> you go listen to the reader. Yeah. 
that really going to get you in more trouble than you're going to be able to get out of. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Isaiah 8, and we'll pick it up at verse 13. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Now he says, sanctify the Lord, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. You fear the Lord of hosts. That's who you fear. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. You know, if, you, uh, if you're if you going to really, because dread means to really fear somebody. You know, if you're going to really fear God, uh, if you're going to really fear anybody, then let the Lord of hosts be your fear, and let him be your dread. Go ahead and read on. And he should be for a sanctuary, uh -huh. but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. Now, he's going to be for us. This Jesus you're reading about. Yes, it is. I know, it is. Now he said, and, and he going to be for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. In other words, all of the family of Israel, you know, you had Judah, uh, the two tribes, and you had uh, 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 Israel, the ten tribes. He said, so now uh, he going to be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. And he is a stone of stumbling, and he is still a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, once you bring him up, you won't offend Israel, you bring Jesus up. I'm talking about the real one now. You That's understand right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about that one that Paul told you about over in Corinthians. I'm talking about the real one. You bring him up, and they'll let you know in a hurry that he is an offense. Well, you know, I believe in Jesus because I go to the Christian church, and all we talk about is Jesus. You don't talk about the real one. That's right. How do I know that? Because you do not talk the doctrine that the real one brought. You talk a doctrine that the one that came from Rome brought. The real one, he did not tell you to keep his birthday on December the 25th, What you going to do in about a month from now. The real one did not say he came and nailed the law to the cross. The real one said the law is good as long as there is a heaven and Amen. an earth. That's right. And he said, whoever break one of the least of these commandments or even teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom. That's what the real one said. That's right. Now, if, if, you, if, 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 if you're dealing with a doctrine other than that, then you are dealing with a false doctrine. And, and, and listen, I, I, can, I can do a whole lesson on just that. <laughs> but we, we ain't got time to do that either. Uh, let's go now to uh, what verse are we? read verse uh, uh, Middle uh, 14. Go ahead and read then. For a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And many among them shall stumble and fall. Go ahead. And be broken and be snared and be taken. Uh -huh. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Wait a minute. See what he said? Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. So you got the testimony and you got the law, don't you? And he's going to tell you here, if anybody come and they're not speaking according to both of them, it is because there is no light in them because you got these Old Testament saints and these New Testament Christians. You know, one tell you all you need is the old, and the other tell you all you need is the new. And the Lord said, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Right. He letting you know you better have them both. And that's the only way you're going to get it right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read some more. Verse right, skip down. Well, skip down to verse, uh, skip down to, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 19. Go ahead and read. When they should say unto you, uh -huh. seek unto them that have familiar spirits. Now, if they, he just told you, you know, you seek unto the Lord your God. You fear him. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Now, if they say unto you, seek unto him that have familiar spirits. You know, we read about these familiar spirits over in Deuteronomy 18. The Lord said, don't deal with them people because you're getting yourself a demon. So now, if, if, so now. He said, and when they say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits. Go ahead and read on, brother. And then to wizards that peep uh -huh. and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Now, should not a people seek unto their God? You know, if they tell you, seek unto familiar spirits. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living unto the dead? If you want to know 
something about what's going on among the living. Why are you going seeking out the dead? That's right. That do not make any sense when the no dead sir. can't tell you nothing. That's right. The book saying the day they die, their very thoughts perish. Somebody should have told Saul that. That's right. Because that's what he did. You know, he went among the dead trying to figure out what's going on among the living. How am I going to get these Philistines off my head, Samuel? <laughs> Samuel in the grave. That's right. <laughs> did you finish that verse? Yes, sir. Well, read the next one. Verse 20. Go ahead. To the law and to the testimony. Now he said to the law and to the testimony. What is the law? The law that is the Old Testament. What is the test? The, uh, uh, the, uh, the testimony? That is the testimony of Jesus. Because Jesus came to testify That's right. what the prophets wrote about. Yes, sir. What people don't understand. You understand That's what right. I'm saying? He told you he ain't came with nothing new. He came to tell you about what the prophets wrote. And if he had not come to tell you that, it would have been a whole lot of things that the prophets wrote about that you wouldn't understand. And I know you don't understand because I know some now that don't deal with the testimony and they done messed up the law. That's right. Because they do not uh, read the testimony. As Paul said about them, when, when, when they read uh, Moses, they got a veil over their eyes. But he said, in the day they turn to the Lord, then that veil will be removed from them. But they ain't going to turn to the Lord. Therefore, they're going to walk around blind. And what do you have? The blind leading the blind. That's and right. you know what's going to happen when the blind lead the blind. Everybody's headed to the ditch. That's right. Now, uh, uh, again, he said, to the law. And to the testimony. Go ahead and read on. If they speak not according to this word, uh -huh. it is because there is no light in them. And if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no understanding. Let's go now to uh let's go now to uh second Peter chapter two, and we'll pick it up at verse one. Second Peter two, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Two and one. Two and one. So you would uh, show you what uh, 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 Peter wrote. Second Peter chapter two. And we began reading at verse one, two and one. OK, go ahead and read. But there were false prophets also among the people. Uh huh. Even if there should be false teachers among you. Now he said there was false prophets among the people, and he said there even will be false teachers among you. There was false prophets among the people way back. And the, the, the false stuff started in Genesis chapter 2 That's when right. he said man on the earth. And you have had them ever since. And now Peter is saying there was false prophets among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, we had them way back, and you still got them because Jesus said in these latter days you was going to have many. many. That's right. You know, you might have had a few back then, but today you got many. That's right. Go ahead and read. Who privately shall bring in damnable heresy. Now, you know what heresy is? That is thing that is contrary to the word of God. That's what heresy is. Now, he said they're going to bring in not just heresies, but damnable heresies, some, some stuff that will really get you in trouble. That's right. Anything damnable is not good. Go ahead and read on. Even denying the Lord that bought them uh -huh. and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Go ahead and read. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Now, he said, and many, not a few, but he said many would follow their evil way, because if it's contrary to the word of God, if it's heresy, heresy, then it is damnable. It is evil. That's right. And he said, many will follow their evil ways. Go ahead and read on. By reason of whom the way of truth should be evil spoken of. And they will speak evil of the truth. And you don't think they will? You know, here they come with some damnable heresy, and you come with the Bible in your hand, That's right. laying it out there plain and simple. There ain't, there ain't no long uh, explanation or interpretation needed. And they will speak evil of that. You know, they will tell you that uh, 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 Jesus died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning, and you show them in the Bible where he died in the middle of the week, and they will speak evil of that. 
but they can't find nowhere where he died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday That's morning. Right. That's right. That's right. So what is it? It is damnable heresy. And it's going to mess you up. They done told you to do one thing when God done said do something else. They done told you, you know, you got to do the first day of the Sabbath day. God said do the seventh, didn't he? That's right. He promised you salvation for doing what he said to do, not for doing what some man with some damnable heresy said to do. Because if, it, if, if it's not supported by the word of God, then it is heresy. What verse are we? Go ahead verse and finish three. it. Go ahead and finish it. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you. Now, uh, skip down to uh, verse 17. Go ahead and read, bro. These are wells without water, mm -hmm. clouds that are carried with the tempest. Now, you know, a well's are supposed to have some water, don't it? But anyway, you know, when you go to the well, you're looking to get some water, right? That's right. And when you go to a minister, you're looking to get the word of God. That's what you're looking for, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. But if he ain't got none, then what he, how are you going to give it to you? He says, so there are wells that ain't got no water. You going to what you think is a man of God to get the word of God, and he ain't got it. Right. You know, Isaiah even told you about that. He told you about the lamb, didn't you? That's he right. said you give the book to him and said, read it. And he said unto you, uh, 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 the book is sealed unto me. And then you give it to the unlearned and tell him to read it. And he said, I can't read it for I am unlearned. And so what do you wind up getting? He told you what you wind up getting. You wind up getting the precepts of men. And okay. Jesus told you about that. He said, when you do it according to the precepts of men, you are doing it all in vain. That's right. That's right. You're wasting your time. In other words, you might as well eat, drink, and be merry. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and read. These are wells without water, uh -huh. clouds that are carried with the tempest, Go ahead. to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Uh -huh. When they speak great swelling words of vanity. Well, he said when they speak great swelling words. Oh, they sound good. <laughs> if you listen to them, you know, and then he got all them DDTs behind <laughs> his name too. <laughs> Reverend, doctor, prophet, <laughs> apostle. <laughs> And he and and, and 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 he speaks well, an excellent orator, and he using words that you don't even know what they are yourself. That's right. But you know they <laughs> they sound wise anyway. Man, spit out a few of them big words. You say, oh man, this guy here, yeah, I know he know what he's talking about. He's intelligent. <laughs> but they are great swelling words of vanity. In other words, he are doing a, he doing a lot of talking and he ain't saying nothing. That's right. Because if he is not telling you. What it is that will get you salvation, whatever he's saying, it ain't nothing. Go ahead and read some more. They are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much want wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Now, let's go over to, uh, let's go over to uh, 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 Acts chapter uh, 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Acts chapter 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 20. Acts 20. And 20. Because Paul was warning these uh, 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 people uh, about these people that's going to come to you uh, w with this uh, perverted gospel. He, he, he's warning them here about them. Because apparently this is the last time that, that he felt anyway that he would have an opportunity to minister unto these people. So he just warned them, beware now about these that's going to come after me. Start reading at verse 20, Acts 20, and we'll pick it up at verse 20, 20 and 20. Go ahead and read. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, uh -huh. but have shown you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Now he said, look here. He said, I ain't kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. 
and he said, I done taught it to you in public. In other words, I done stood up at some podium and talked it to you. And he said, I've even done it from house to house. You know, I stopped by your house and I spit out the word to you. That's and right. I came by your house and I talked to you too. So now I done did it publicly and I've done it house to house as well. And I ain't kept back nothing from you. Nothing that was needful for you. I was told you all of it. Go ahead and read on testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. And look here, and I didn't just go and testify to my people either. You know, I'm an Israelite, so I ain't going to talk to nothing but Israelite. No, I done talked to the Jews, and I done talked to the Greeks, which were Gentiles as well. I done told all y'all everything that you should know. Go ahead and read on. Repentance toward God uh -huh. and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I done told you about repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read on. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, uh -huh. not knowing the things that shall befall me there, uh -huh. save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me. Now, he said, now, you know, I go bound up to Jerusalem, and I don't know what's going to happen to me there. You know, they might kill me there, but I ain't worried about it. You understand what I'm saying? Only thing I'm worried about is that I done, you know, I done kept the faith, I done finished the course, and I done did the thing that the That's Lord right. told me to do. So I'm going up bound to Jerusalem. I don't know what might be waiting on me there, but I do know one thing. I know they are trying to kill me, but but I ain't, I ain't concerned about that. Go ahead and read on. 24. Uh-huh. But none of these things move me. See what he said? No, none of this stuff move me, man. I ain't moved by none of that stuff. Because I know if I die, Menacing the word of God, then I got it made. You know, right. I, you know, I done kept the faith, yes, sir. And, and 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 I'm and I'm and I'm doing the thing that God said to do. So I ain't worried about it. That don't move me, cause I know I'm in good shape. If I fall asleep, go ahead and read on. Neither can I have my life dear unto myself. Go ahead and read. That I might finish my course with joy uh -huh. and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. Now he said that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry that the Lord Jesus gave me, not the ministry that I came up with. You know, like y'all don't accuse me of. That's right. And they and and to this day, they still accusing him of, see, you know, this is Paul's dispensation now, see. Go ahead, Reed. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. Uh-huh. And now behold. I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God uh -huh. shall see my face no more. So he, you know, he figured that, you know, the Lord is, is showing him because somewhere in the scripture, Paul talked about that, you know, his, his time was at hand. So now he, and he's, he's the way he's speaking to these people as if that uh, uh, his time is close and, and that he, he will probably see them no more. But he just confirming that, you know, he has given them uh, the word of God and uh, but he's going to warn them about uh, what might happen. Go ahead and read on. Wherefore, I take you to record this day uh -huh. that I am pure from the blood of all men. She said, well, I, I take unto you this day. I am pure from the blood of all men. Because the Lord said when he set a man to be a watchman, it is that man's responsibility right. to warn the people. Because if he don't warn them and the sword come and take them out, then his blood is on the watchman's hand. That's right. But if he warn them and the sword come and take them out, uh, uh, you know, uh, then their blood is on their own hand. That's right. He says, so I'm pure from the blood of all of y'all. I done told you everything. I didn't hold back nothing, man. I, even when I knew you didn't want to hear it, I told you anyway. Because I know you, because certain things, you know, people just don't want to hear. Like I did, I left the last week. My people don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. You know that if you don't uh, get it get it right, God's going to throw you in the fire. You don't want to hear that. But I told you anyway. Go ahead, read. <laughs> Verse 27. Uh -huh. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Go ahead, read. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself uh -huh. and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Now he said, take heed unto yourself and over all of the flock in which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. Overseers, go ahead and read on. To feed the church of God. Uh, he said, now you, what, what you need to do is feed the church of God. That's what he's saying to them. And what are they supposed to feed them? With knowledge and understanding, the word of God, in other words. Go ahead and read. Which he have purchased with his own blood. Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, 
not sparing the flock. Now he said, after I leave, then some grievous wolves going to enter unto among you. Who are these wolves? They are false prophets. You know, Jesus told you about them. These wolves that are in sheep clothing. That's right. So now he said, they're going to enter in among you, and they ain't going to spare the flock, and they don't spare the flock. Lord even said that, the, that these false prophets, they have no mercy on the flock at all. Anytime, first of all, you're going to fleece a man out of all his little earnings. That's right. To put in your pocket. (laughs) Then you're going to turn around and teach him some stuff that'll get him thrown in the fire. If that ain't it, that's showing absolutely no mercy for the flock. You you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to take all your money. Then I'm going to tell you some stuff that'll get you put in the fire. That's why the Lord said their own shepherds don't even pity them. Ain't got no mercy for you. I know you make. $2 $2 an hour, and I want a $1.99 of that. <laughs> then I'm going to turn around and laugh to you after that. Go ahead and read. Verse 30. Go ahead and read. Also of your own self shall men arise. Now he said also some among you are men going to arise. Go ahead and read on. Speaking for perverse things. See what I'm saying? Speaking perverse thing. You know what perverse is? That is something that is contrary to the word of God. Speaking perverse things, he says. Go ahead and read on. To draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. What verse are we? Verse 31. Go ahead and read it. Therefore watch and remember Mm -hmm. that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Uh And now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, uh-huh. which is able to build you up and to give you an, an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. See what I'm saying? Uh, now I'm giving you the word of God that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all of those that are sanctified. So he's warning about these false ministers that's going to come with this false doctrine. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Romans chapter 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 17, Romans 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17, Romans 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Okay. All right, go ahead and read, bro. Now I beseech you, brethren, uh-huh. mark them which causes division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. See, but now you know the doctrine that I've been, it's Paul too, and he's saying to these Romans, you know, mark them that are offensive and, 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 and teach contrary to the doctrine that you have learned. You know, if you go back and in this book of Romans here, you know, he told you about keeping the law and all that. Because right. he told you in the seventh chapter of Romans that the law is good and it is holy and it is just, and I try to keep it at all times. And he even told you in the third chapter of Romans how that, you know, once you're, uh, uh, you're, uh, you've been baptized, that take care of all your past sins, and after that, you got to walk in the law. So that is the doctrine that he had been teaching them, and he even taught them about the circumcision as well. That's right. Because he told them circumcision is good as long as you keep the law. He That's told right. them that in the second chapter of Rome. Now he said, you know, uh, now remember, you know the doctrine that you have learned, and do not walk contrary to that. Go ahead and read on. And avoid them. Uh-huh. For they now anybody that teach, uh, other, than, other than the doctrine that you have learned from us, he said, avoid these people. Go ahead and read on. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he said, now, they that are such, they do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read on. But their own belly. But their own bellies. In, 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 uh, in other words, they are, they are about their own desires. It is not about the word of God with them. It is not about teaching them what they need to know in order to save themselves. It is about their own desires. Go ahead and read on. And by good words and fair speeches uh-huh. to see the hearts of the simple. See what it said? By good words and fair speeches, they deceive the heart of the simple. Let's go to uh, Jude. Uh, We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Jude is the, the, the book right before you get to Revelation. We're going to pick it up at verse 14 because it is only... Uh, 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 
one chapter. One chapter. So we're going to pick up Jude, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 14, because it is written in Jude about those that are all about their own bellies and not about the word of God, about their desires. You know, they 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 looking for some personal glory for uh, for themselves, not about the word of God with them. Start reading at uh, <clears throat> verse 14. Go ahead and read. And Enoch also, mm -hmm. the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, uh -huh. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints uh -huh. to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed uh -huh. and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Go ahead and read. These are murmurers, uh -huh. complainers, walking after their own lust. See what he said? They are their murmurers and they are complainers and they're walking after their own love. You got to be careful about that murmuring all the time. You know, right. Israel, big about that murmuring. Right. Nobody it, All you got to do is go back and look at their history. You see the trouble it got them in in the wilderness, didn't it? Yes, sir. All that murmuring and complaining. You know, God feeding them with food from heaven, but they murmuring. Well, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I, I don't want this. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't want this stuff here. Murmuring, you understand what I'm saying? Israel is good for that. Now you done got all the way over the New Testament, and he's still telling you about these people here, ungodly men to have ungodly deeds, murmuring and murmurs, and they are complainers. Go ahead and read on. Walking after their own lust. And they're walking after their own lust. It ain't about the word of God with them. It is all about their own belly. Walking after their own lust. Go ahead and read on. And their mouth speaking great swelling words. And again, we have my hand here. Their mouth speaking great swelling words. Go ahead and read on. Having men's person in admiration because of advantage. And then, you know, they got men that admire them. Oh, man, did you see Reverend Dr. So-and-so? <laughs> man. Did did you hear that sermon that he gave? <laughs> Men admire them. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. But all they're doing is speaking great swelling words of vanity. That's all they're doing. Go ahead and read on. But beloved, uh -huh. remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. How that they told you there should be markers in the last time. Now he say you remember the words that were spoken by our the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. They told you how that in the last time there would be markers. Go ahead and read on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. And they will be walking after their own ungodly lust, and that is what they are doing. Go ahead and read on. These be they who separate themselves, uh -huh. sensual, having not the spirit. He said, these be they that separate themselves. They are sensual, worldly in the words, and they do not have the spirit of God. Because they had the spirit of God, then they will be giving you the word of God. That's right. Let's go further. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Matthew 16, and we're going to begin reading at verse 5. Read about these, uh, you know, Jesus here going to talk about uh, some leavening. But uh, we're going to understand here, it, it's, it's, it's not really leavening that you put in bread that he's talking about. It's all going to be made clear to you. Let's pick it up at Matthew chapter uh, 16 and begin reading at verse Five, Matthew 16, and we'll pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead and read on. And when his disciples will come to the other side, uh -huh. they had forgotten to take bread. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now he said, Take heed, and they forgot to bring bread. And then when he said, uh, The leavening of the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, well, the first thing that come to your mind is bread. You know, the kind of leavening that you put in bread, right? But that is, the kind, that is not the kind of leavening that he's talking about here. Go ahead and read on. And they reason among themselves, saying, uh -huh. It is because we have taken no bread. And they reason among themselves, Well, well must, he must be talking about because we didn't bring no bread with us. Go ahead and read on. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, uh -huh. O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Go ahead. 
Do you not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? No, nah, he said, you know, if, if it was about bread, that ain't, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That's right. Don't, did you all forget about the five loaves and the 5,000 and how many baskets I took up? I took five loaves, fed 5,000 people, and then you took up some that was left over. That's right. You you didn't you you forgot about that you know this ain't about bread I'm telling you to beware of the leavening of the of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees go ahead read on neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up and do, and do, did you forget about the seven loaves and the seven thousands and how many baskets you took up go ahead read on how is it that you do not understand that I speak. That I spake it not to you concerning bread, uh -huh. that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, these were religious sects. That's what they were. You know, like you got your Baptists, your Methodists, and so on, et cetera, today. You know, uh, back then among the Jews, it was the Pharisees mostly and the Sadducees. So now he said, beware of their leavening. Go ahead and read on. Then understood, then, excuse me, then understood how that he bade them not beware the leaven of bread. Now then they understood how he was not telling them to beware of the leavening of bread. Go ahead and read on. But of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. But of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That is what you need to beware of because they had false doctrine. You know, and Jesus, he talked about it much in the 23rd chapter of Matthew. We're going to go over there. But we're not going to go into all the stuff that he said about it, but you can read uh, 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 on your own. But we're going to read just a few verses here. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23. And we're going to begin reading at uh, verse 13. Matthew 23, and we'll pick it up at verse 13. 23 and 13. Okay, 23. And verse 13, he really tore into these scribes and Pharisees in there, but he just called it like it was here in this 23rd chapter of Matthew. But we're going to just pick it up at verse uh, 13 because I'm, I'm, I can get what I'm looking for here in this starting at 13 verse. Go ahead and read, bro. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. You know, he told you to beware of their doctrine, didn't he? Yes, now, he now he's saying to them, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. Go ahead and read on. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Now he said, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. How is it that he shut it up? Because, by their teaching. You know, they, he told you to beware of their doctrine, didn't he? Yes, sir. Because they are giving them a false doctrine. Right. So now he said, beware of that. Now he said, but uh, he said, now, but woe unto you, uh, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead, read on. For ye neither go in yourselves, uh -huh. neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Now he said, you're not going to get in yourself, and those that would go in, you stop them from getting in. How do you stop them from getting in? You stop them from getting in by what you teach them. Because if you had, if you teach men a false doctrine and they follow it, then they can't get into the kingdom. That's right. So now you ain't going in yourself and, 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 you, and those that would get in, you stand there and block the door and keep them from getting in. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, uh -huh. for you devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayer. Go ahead. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Now you seem all pious and all of that. You know, you devour widow houses, and for a pretense you make long prayer. You know, you stand there and you pray, our Lord is wonderful, he is great, he is marvelous, and all of that. But you done shut up the kingdom of heaven. Right. You ain't going in, and you done stop those from going in that would go in. He said, for a pretense you make a long prayer. Go ahead and read on. 15. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. Uh -huh. But you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. Now, you know, in other, you know what a proselyte is? That means to make one what you are. Now, he said you come past sea and land. In other words, you got churches everywhere. You know, I'll, I'll see, well, you know, this is the uh, uh, mother church here. 
See, we got churches over in that city and we have other churches in that city and then we have churches in that city and then we have churches all the way overseas as well. So now, you done come past sea and land to make one a proselyte. Go ahead and read on. And when he is made, uh -huh. you make him twofold, twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Now, when, and when you and when you finish with him, after you finish proselytizing him, then he is twofold more the child of hell than you yourself. In other words, he's a bigger devil now than you are. <laughs> you a devil, cause Jesus warned you about be aware of that doctrine. Now, after you finish with him, now he's worse than you are. That's right. Let's go now. Let's go to uh uh uh. uh Let's, let's, let's go to uh, 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 Luke chapter 11. We're going to read just one verse, verse 52. Luke 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 52. Just to show you how it is that they shut up the kingdom of heaven. Luke 11 and verse 52. 11 and 52. Okay. Go ahead and read it, brother. Woe unto you lawyers, mm -hmm. for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. See, that's how they did it. They took away the key of knowledge. You understand how they set up the kingdom? Because they took away the key of knowledge. Knowledge is what's going to get you in the kingdom. That's you understand right. what I'm saying? There are certain things that you have to know and certain things that you have to follow in order to get in the kingdom. Now, if I, don't, if I take away that key of knowledge, then you ain't going to get in. And, and, and then I ain't getting in either. Cause I done, not only have I messed you up, I done messed myself up as well. So now, you take away the key of knowledge. Go ahead and read on. Ye enter not in yourself, uh -huh. and them that were entering in, ye hindered. You don't enter in yourself, and those that would enter in, you hinder them by what you teach them. Because you have taken away the key of knowledge from these people. And that is what these false ministers have done. They have taken away the key of knowledge. Because you ain't getting no knowledge. You know you ain't getting no knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? You go there and you sit and you listen to two verses. And then you get his life story for the next two <laughs> hours. What good is my life story going to do you anyway? It ain't going to get you in the kingdom of God. That's right. <laughs> you need to hear the word of God. That's what yes, you sir. need to hear. Yes, sir. My life story is irrelevant. You need to hear the true word of God. That's what's going to get you in. But what do you get? You get one verse, maybe two, and after that a whole lot of rhetoric about what he did back in the day. Let's go to uh, Titus chapter 1. And we'll pick it up at verse 9. And I'm going to show you the real danger of false doctrine. Titus chapter 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 9. 1 and 9. Titus 1 and 9. He was a... Uh, he was writing to Titus here, and he was telling him about the uh, qualifications of an elder, what, what, uh, what qualifications an elder should meet. But we want to pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead and read. Holding fast the faithful word uh -huh. as he had been taught. Now he said he should be holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught. Go ahead and read on. That he may be able by sound, sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. That he may be able by sound doctrine, both to convince and exhort the gainsayers. The gainsayers, those are the ones that are in opposition against the word of God. Now, that he may be able to convince, which is convict, and exhort the gainsayers. Go ahead and read on. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. Now, he said there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceived. This is what Paul is saying to Titus here. He said, look here, there are a lot of, uh, un many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers out there. Go ahead and read on. Especially they of the circumcision. Especially those of Israel. Especially them. Can't nobody beat Israel being a false prophet. <laughs> I've seen some pretty good Gentile false prophets, but, ain't, but, but none of them hold account to Israel's That's false right. prophet. Okay. Go ahead and read. 
whose mouths must be stopped. He said their mouths must be stopped. Go ahead and read on. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. See what I said? They subvert. In other words, they turn away whole houses. You know, they done turn mother away. They done turn dad away, junior and little sister too. And teaching things that they ought not. And he said they are doing it for filthy lucre's sake. Go ahead and read on. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, uh -huh. the Christians are always liars, uh -huh. evil beasts, slow bellies. Mm -hmm. This witness is true. Go ahead. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, uh -huh. that they may be sound in the faith. Go ahead. Not giving, not giving heed to Jewish fables uh -huh. and, com and commandments of men that turn from the truth. See, that's what false doctrine does. It turns you away from the truth. That is, that, that is the real danger in it because when it turns you away from the truth, then it turns you away from the Lord, which is going to turn you away from salvation. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Until the pure, all things are pure. Uh -huh. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, Go ahead. is nothing pure. Uh -huh. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Go ahead. They, prof they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him. Now, he said they profess that they know God because they talk God. You know, they come to you as ministers of Christ, as ministers of righteousness. But he said they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. Go ahead and read on. Being abominable and disobedient uh -huh. and unto every good work reprobate. And unto every good work reprobate is sin. Uh, Going into chapter 2, I'm going to read just a little bit of that. I didn't have this in the lesson, but since we're here, we're going to read it. Go ahead and read a little bit of it. Go ahead and read 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. But speak thou the things which become sound, doctrine. Now he's saying to Titus, but Titus, you speak the things that become sound, doctrine. And he's going to tell him some of the things that become sound, doctrine. We need to hear this. I, you know, I don't get to this too often. So we're going to hear this, even though I didn't really have it as a part of the lesson. So now he said, but you, Titus, teach the thing that becomes sound doctrine. Go ahead and read on. That the aged men be sober, uh -huh. grave, temperate. Now he said that they be sober. In other words, of a sound mind, walking in the word of God, grave, serious, temperate, have some kind of self-control. Go ahead and read on. Sound in faith, uh -huh. in charity, in patience. Now he says, sound in faith and in charity, which is love and in patience. Go ahead and read on. The aged women likewise. Now he said, and the aged women likewise. Go ahead and read on. That they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers. That, they, that the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior that become of holiness. He said that they not be False accusers. You know, you have to be careful about that false accuser stuff. It causes major problems. We, you know, we, we, we'll we get into some of that in another lesson at another time. Go ahead and read on. Not giving too much wine. Uh -huh. Teachers of good things. Now, he said not giving uh, to too much wine, not giving too much wine, rather, and they should be teachers of good things. You know, if they're going to teach somebody, uh, it should be teachers of good things. Go ahead and read on. That they may teach the young women to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, Go ahead. to love their children. That they may teach, you know, because it's, it's okay for the older women to teach the younger women, but if they're going to teach them, that they may teach their uh, the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Go ahead and read on. To be discreet, uh -huh. chaste, keepers at home, Go ahead. obedient to their own husbands. I know that don't sit well. I already know that. <laughs> but it's okay. And, you know, it, it's written in the Word of God. So your problem ain't with me. It's, it's with the Word of God. Go ahead and read on. That the Word but, of God be not blasphemed. Uh-huh. Young men likewise. Go ahead. Exhort to be sober-minded. Now, you say young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In self-control, other words. Go ahead and read on. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good work. Now, he's saying all things. Even the young men, it says showing themselves a pattern of good works. Go ahead and read on. In doctrine, showing uncorrupt uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. See what I say? In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, seriousness and sincerity go ahead and read on sound speech uh -huh. that cannot be condemned go ahead that he may be excuse me that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you uh-huh exhort servants to be obedient to their master now that is good i just 
feel I needed to read a little bit of that, even though it wasn't a part. Let's get back to the lesson now. You ain't got long. Hold on for a little while longer. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter uh, 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 13, and let's pick it up at verse uh, 22. Luke 13, and we'll pick it up at verse 22. 13 and 22. 13 and 22. Okay, go ahead and read. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and, and journeying toward Jerusalem. Now, this is Jesus. He went uh, through the cities and villages. He was teaching, and he was uh, headed toward Jerusalem. Go ahead and read on. Then said one unto him, uh -huh. Lord, are there few that be saved? And then one said unto him, Lord, is there few that be saved? Listen to his reply. Go ahead and read on. And he said unto them, uh -huh. strive to enter in at the straight gate. Go ahead. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and should not be able. Now, you know, he's talking He's talking here about uh, uh, religious people. That's what he's talking about. He said because they seek to enter therein and will not be able to enter. So he ain't talking about the street people. This ain't about them. This is about the religious people. He said those that seek to, they will be seeking to enter in, and they will not enter in, and he's going to even, we're going to find out why they will not enter in. But he asked the question. The man asked him the question, Lord, is there many uh, to be saved? He said, strive to enter the straight gate. For many, I said, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. We're going to find out why they will not be able. Go ahead and read on. When once the master of the house is risen up uh -huh. and have shut to the door, Go and ahead. you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not when she are. Now, this, that, that's going to be a hard thing now. He said, because there, there's going to come a time that the Lord going to shut the door. It ain't like, you know, uh, whenever I decide to come around, I'll come around. Uh-uh. There's going to be a time the Lord said he's going to raise up and he's going to shut the door. And they began to stand without and to knock saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And then I said, I'm going to answer unto you. I know you not. Where, whence are you? Go ahead and read on. Then shall you begin to say, uh -huh. we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Go ahead. And thou hast taught in our street. Go ahead. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when she are. Uh -huh. Depart from me. All ye workers of iniquity. Now he said, I'm going to say unto you, I know ye not. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. This is religious people that we are reading about here. This ain't the street people that we are dealing with. It said again in Matthew chapter 7. Let's go over there. Matthew 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Matthew 7 and 13. 7 and 13. Seven and thirteen. Okay, go ahead and read. Enter ye in at the straight gate, uh -huh. for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in in thereat. You know, it's a thing about that. You know, the majority is always right. No, they're not. <laughs> not according to this, anyway. He said, enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go out in that gate. So be careful about following the masses. That's right. Because right. right. you have always assumed that the masses have it right. No, they don't. That's right. Not according to what we're reading here. The book said, wide is the gate. And many are those that lead to destruction. But narrow is the path that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Go ahead and read on. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Go ahead. And few there be that find it. You know, when you get it right, then you ain't going to run into a whole lot on that path. You understand what I'm saying? There ain't going to be many on that. You're going to run into one here and there. Narrow is the path that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Go ahead and read on. 
Beware of false prophets uh -huh. which come to you in sheep's clothing. Go ahead. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now he said, Beware of these false prophets that come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know, that's what Paul said about them. He said, right. You know, after my departure, there will come wolves in that will not spare the flock. Who are these wolves? They are false prophets. That's who they are. And they're bringing you. False doctrine. Skip down to uh, verse uh, uh, 21. Go ahead, read on. Now, every one that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know that thing about Lord, Lord, and we're good about that. You know, Lord this, Lord that. But he said, not every one that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's going to let you know the ones that are getting in. Go ahead, read on. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many now, the one that's going to get in is the ones that do the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Go ahead and read on. Many will say to me in that day, uh -huh. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? Uh -huh. And in thy name done many wonderful works? Now, you know, it's not street people that are saying this, is it? No, you know, we done did this in your name. We done did that in your name. We done cast out devil in your name. And we done done many wonderful works in your name. These are somebody that's been in somebody's religion all their life. But they was being taught the wrong thing. That's right. But they're going to stand there and confess unto the Lord. You know, Lord, we done did this in your name. And we have done all of these wonderful things in your name. But look at what the Lord is going to say to them. Go ahead and read on. And then will I confess unto them, uh -huh. I never knew you. Go ahead. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And then I'm going to profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Go ahead and read on. Because they didn't have the doctrine right. You know, they had the name right, That's but they right. didn't have the doctrine right. You got to have a doctrine. You know, didn't we read earlier, it said if they don't come to you with the doctrine of Jesus Christ, don't let them in your house and don't even bid them God's feet. That's right. Because if you do, then you are partakers of their evil deeds. Because if they ain't got the doctrine of Christ, then what they're bringing you, it is evil deeds. Go ahead and read on. Therefore, Whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, uh -huh. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now he said, if you hear these sayings of his and doeth them, and if you go back and read the sayings, you know, he told you about walking in the law. You know, he told you about fasting. He told you about loving your brother, even loving your enemy. He told you about all of that stuff. Now he's telling you, the ones that hear these sayings and doeth them, I will liken him Unto a wise man. Go ahead and read on. 25. Uh -huh. And the rain descended and the floods came. Uh -huh. And the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. Go ahead. For it was founded upon a rock. Go ahead and read. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not uh -huh. should be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Go ahead. And the rain descended and the floods came. Uh -huh. And the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Now, you're going to either build your house on a rock or you're going to build it on the sand. Which one are you call? You're going to build your own house. Now, which one are you going to build it on? You want to build it on a rock, you build it on the word of God. If you don't build it on the word of God, then you don't build it on sand and it's going to fall. Right. Every, every house that the Lord did not build, it's going to fall eventually. He said, Well, I know some of them, they've been around for centuries. Don't worry, they're going to fall. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, uh -huh. the people were astonished at his doctrine. See what I said? It came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Because he taught them as one having authority. Go ahead and finish that next verse. Well, he verse. taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now, we got four other scriptures, and then we're going to let you out here. Let's go to John chapter 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. I just had to touch on this doctrine of prosperity a little bit because that's pretty much all you hear nowadays anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody from the stoke front, front preacher to the mega church preacher, <laughs> all they talk about is uh, money. And they got a couple of scriptures they use to try and support it, and this is one. This is perhaps the main one. We're going to read it and see what it says. Start reading at chapter 10 
and began reading at verse 8. John 10 and 8. Go ahead and read. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, uh -huh. but the sheep did not hear them. Now, this is Jesus. He said, all that came before me are thieves and robbers. He said, but the sheep didn't listen to them. And if you're really one of the sheep, then you ain't going to listen to nobody but the real shepherd. And who is the real shepherd? That is Jesus, isn't That's it? That's right. And you're going to listen to his words, and you ain't listening to nobody else. And if you're really a sheep, those are the only words that you're going to listen to. Go ahead and read on. I am the door. Uh -huh. By me, if any man enter in, he should be saved and should go in and out and find pasture. Now, he said he is the door. And if you enter in that door, then any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out, and he shall find pasture. In other words, nourishment, food, nutrition, the word of God. Go ahead and read on. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill go and ahead. to destroy. Uh -huh. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Well, see, when they read you this, then they're talking about money. You know, see, I, see, Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Well, I'm going to show you what this life more abundantly is that Jesus came that you might have. Skip down to verse 25. Go ahead and read on. Jesus answered them, mm -hmm. I told you and ye believe not. Go ahead. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Go ahead. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep, uh -huh. as I said unto you. Go ahead. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, uh -huh. and they follow me. See what I said? My sheep, they hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. What do you mean they follow him? They follow his teaching, in other words. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't mean they, he walk in this path, and you get in, walk right behind him. That ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about you follow his teaching. I know them, and they follow me. Go ahead and read on. And I give unto them eternal life. And I give unto them, not I give unto them a lot of money. I give unto them eternal life. This is the life more abundantly that he came that you might have, because that is what this word is really all about. It is all about eternal life. It ain't never been about money. It's always been about eternal life. It was about that from day one when he set uh, Adam and Eve in the God and set before them the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's always been about eternal life, people. It started out being about eternal life, and guess what? It's going to end about eternal life. Because he told you in the very last chapter in the Bible, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. Started with eternal life. It, it, it was eternal life in the middle, and it's going to be eternal life at the end. That's right. Go ahead and read. And I give unto them eternal life, uh -huh. and they shall never perish. Go ahead. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we'll pick it up at verse 3. Hold on just a little while longer. You got two more scriptures after this. Just want you to understand about the dangers of false doctrine and why you need to put a lot of emphasis on getting this thing right. First uh, Timothy chapter 6, and we'll begin reading at verse 3. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3. Okay, go ahead and read. If any man teach otherwise mm -hmm. and consent not to wholesome words, Good. even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. See what it says, if any man teach otherwise and do not consent of, cons uh, uh, consent of the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrine that is according to godliness. Go ahead and read on. He is proud, uh -huh. knowing nothing. Now he is proud and he knowing nothing. I don't care how good he sound, but the book says he is proud and he don't know nothing. Go ahead and read on. But dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, even surmising, uh -huh. perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind. See what it said? They perverse. And the, the, the disputing of men of corrupt mind. Their mind been corrupted because any time you don't have the real word of God, then your mind has been corrupted. Men of corrupt mind. Go ahead and read on. And destitute of the truth. And they are in destitute. You know what destitute mean? That means you have a serious yeah. lacking. Right. You know, you yes, see sir. a man say, that man is destitute. That means he ain't hardly got nothing. And he said, these men, they are in destitute of the truth. The truth is the farthest thing 
from them. Go ahead and read on. Supposing that gain is godliness. And they supposing that gain has a lot to do with godliness. Well, that covers uh, about the majority <laughs> of them today, then, yes, doesn't sir. it? Yes, <laughs> sir. Because all I hear them talk about is gain, as if it has something to do with godliness. You know, God's going to bless you if you give me all your money. <laughs> that ain't never made no sense to me. <laughs> you the one look like you being blessed. I'm giving yes, you my money, but he's going to bless me. Something wrong with that picture, isn't it? Go ahead and read. From such withdraw thyself. See what it said? From such withdraw us. In other words, get away from. In other, uh, when, when, when you hear him talking, you run the other way. <laughs> from such withdraw thyself. Go ahead and read on. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Go ahead and read. For we brought nothing into this world, uh -huh. and it is certain we, we can carry nothing out. Now, God ain't got no problem with you having gain. As long as you don't do anything illegal or immoral to obtain it. God, you can have much gain as you want. But the word of God you need to understand is not about gain. It is about eternal life. If the law, if you should get gain, that's all right. As long as you didn't do nothing wrong to get it. That's right. It's all right. Ain't nothing wrong with having it. There's nothing wrong with having it. Because money is not the root of all evil. The love of it is the root of all evil. That's when you start to do things contrary to the word of God in order to obtain it. Go ahead and read on. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Go ahead. But they which be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, uh -huh. which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. See what I said? The love of money, it is the root of all evil. You know, I, I want money so bad until I got to embezzle you out of your money. You understand right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is contrary to the word of God. That's, you know, that's when you got a love of it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you are doing things contrary to the word of God. And so you are doing evil. Go ahead and read on. Which... Which while some covet after, uh -huh. they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Go ahead. But thou, O man of God, he flee said, these but you, things. O man of God, flee these. You, O man of God, now, flee these things. Go ahead and read on. And follow after righteousness. And follow after righteousness. Go ahead and read on. Godliness. And godliness. Go faith, ahead. Faith. Uh huh. Love. Go ahead. Patience. Meekness. Uh huh. Fight the good fight of faith. Go ahead. Lay hold on eternal life. Fight the foot, good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. That is what you're supposed to be striving for, eternal life. And if you should gain some wealth in your in the process, that's okay too. No, you didn't do nothing ungodly in order to obtain it. But your real goal should be eternal life. Lay hold on on eternal life. Go ahead and read on. Whereunto thou also called uh -huh. and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, so much for the gospel of prosperity. We got two other places. Then you're out of here. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we'll begin reading at verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we'll pick it up at verse 12. 3 and 12. Okay, go ahead and read. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Well, you know, I guess that killed that thing about now to start serving God and my life is going to be one bed of roses. He said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. They're going to come at you. Sometimes even those of your own household. That's right. Uh, Jesus said, even those uh, your, your, your foes shall even be those of your own household sometimes. So don't expect anything else. You understand what I'm saying? You know, everybody going to love me now because I've come in the word of God and I'm trying to do everything right. Then you look up all of a sudden, uh, best friend, when they see you coming, they go the other way. Mama don't want to be bothered with you no more. And even spouse, in some cases, don't want to be bothered with you no more. You Sometimes you're even laying next to your worst enemy every night. Okay. 
And it's all because of the word of God. Because everything was fine until you decided to come into the word of God and, and, and start trying to walk in this thing the right way. And all of a sudden, everybody became your enemy. All those that you loved and that told you that they loved you. And, and, and they probably did. But now you coming with this, with this word of God stuff, you know, this Bible stuff. You know, everything was fine when, you know, we just went to church on Sunday and we did our singing and shouting and, and we went home and we did some pork chops. Everything was good. Good, good to go. <laughs> now here you is, you talking about you can't eat no pork and all that stuff. Now we have become enemies. You understand what I'm saying? Because you have taken on the word of God. But for your good, you have taken it on, and you're trying to give it to them for their good as well. Because you want to give them a doctrine that will give them salvation. Because any doctrine other than the doctrine of the Bible will not get you salvation. It's going to get you cut off. I don't believe it. It don't matter. You don't believe it. I guarantee you, you're going to find it out one day. Well, I'll die and get away from him. No, you ain't. He's going to wake you up <laughs> and stick that Bible in your face. <laughs> so you can't get out of it. Ain't no getting out. So you, you, you best to understand the doctrine of God so that you can get salvation. Go ahead and read on. Verse 13. Go ahead and read. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Now he said evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. This is what they'll be doing. Go ahead and read on. Deceiving and being deceived. See what it said? They will be deceiving and they will be deceived as well. Because some cases you got men that's teaching you, that's deceiving you. And the reason they are deceiving you is because they have been deceived. They ain't got it right. So if I ain't got it right, uh, 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 then uh, if, I, if I got doctrine that's contrary to the word of God, then the only thing that I can give you is doctrine that's contrary to the word of God. So you got these evil men, and he said they will wax worse and worse. They will be deceiving, and they will be deceived. Go ahead and read on. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned uh -huh. and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now he's saying to Timothy, here, remember the thing that you have learned and remember where you learned them at. Go ahead and read on. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, uh -huh. which are able to make thee wise into salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. See what he's saying to Timothy, from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. You got to have the wisdom that you get from the Holy Scriptures in order to get salvation. That's what I've been saying all along. There's certain things that you must know and certain things that you must do in order to get salvation. And where do you get that wisdom from? You get it from the Holy Scriptures. Go ahead and read on. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now you say all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Go ahead and read on. And it's profitable for doctrine. And it is good for doctrine. That's where real doctrine come from. The doctrine that will save you come from. It comes from the Holy Scripture. All Scripture is given by uh, the inspiration of God, and it is good for doctrine. Go ahead and read on. For reproof. And for reproof. Go ahead. For correction. Uh-huh. For instruction in righteousness. And that is where your instruction come from. They come from the Holy Scripture. Go ahead and read on. That the man of God may be perfect. And he say you, you follow these instructions that the man of God may be perfect. Go ahead and read on. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So now, your doctrine, it is supposed to come from the Scripture. That is where sound doctrine come from. Go on into chapter 4 now and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read on. This is what else he is saying to Timothy here. Go ahead and read. I charge thee therefore before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at, at his appearing and his kingdom. Now he's saying to Timothy, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is going to judge the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Go ahead and read on. Preach the word. Uh -huh. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And where do doctrine come from? He just told you it come from the Holy Scripture. So now he said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. You know, sometimes, you know, you preach a, a, a doctrine out of season. Like the season 
I'll say for the Passover, that is around what we call the springtime when the Passover fall. But I might decide I want to teach the Passover in December. If I teach it around when the Passover fall, I'm teaching it in season. And if I decide I want to teach it in December, I'm teaching it out of season. Right. But it is still a word. It is still true. So now he said, teach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Uh, 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 exhort, re uh, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. Go ahead and read on. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Wait a minute. He said a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What is sound doctrine? Sound doctrine is the word of God. But he said a time going to come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Go ahead and read on. But after their own lust, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. See what it says? After their own lust, they're going to heap to themselves having itching ears. That's what they seek after now. That's why they don't like to come here. They, they want to go somewhere where they can get them ears scratched. Do you understand what I'm saying? They want to hear what they want to hear. You don't want to hear this. No, nobody want to hear nothing that's going to put uh, 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 certain limitations on them. You understand what I'm saying? They want to go somewhere where the preacher going to tell them that you can serve God your way. That, you know, you, you don't have any restrictions. They want to serve a God that don't have any restrictions. The true and living God have restrictions. You know, he tell you, you know, don't steal, don't lie, don't commit it up. Restrictions, you understand? They don't want to hear that. They want to go to a place where they're they going to tell them, well, you know, you ain't got to keep the law no more because Jesus nailed it to the cross. That's my preacher there. <laughs> But he is giving you false doctrine, man, because Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it, and the law is good as long as there's a heaven and an earth. He, that is his doctrine, isn't it? That's right. So if they tell you that Jesus nailed it to the cross, they're not giving you his doctrine. They're giving you a false doctrine. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Verse 4. Go ahead. And they should turn away their ears from the truth. And they do turn. Don't they turn them away from the truth? Yeah. If you don't think they're going to turn away from the truth, go to them with a Bible in your hand. That's all you got to do. Read this, I pray thee. Oh, man, we don't need to read it. I know what it said. <laughs> well, if you know what it said, then why are you doing the things that are contrary to what it said? That's right. They're going to turn away their ears from Because what you're telling them, they can read it right out of the Bible. What they believe, they can't read it out of the Bible. And when you try to show it to them, they will turn their ears away from it. Go ahead and read on. And she be turned into fables. And they will turn unto fables. What is fables? False doctrine. Things that is contrary to the word of God. Go ahead and read on. But watch thou in all things, uh -huh. endure affliction. Now he said, watch in all things. And those afflictions that he said, uh, all those that uh, uh, serve Christ Jesus are going to go through, he said, endure them. Go ahead and read on. Do the, work, the work of an evangelist. Go ahead. Make full proof of thy ministry. And make full proof of thy ministry. That's what you need to do. You need to make full proof of your ministry so that you can make certain that you get this thing right. Because false doctrine, people, is dangerous. It can get you cut off. Thank you, and I hope you learned something from this lesson.